Okay, so I know in the last video I showed that um, table file searcher and, and packer and whatnot. Um, we're going to get to that. <laughs> I apologize for not getting all the way through it, but it was just that last video was getting kind of long as it was. Um, and then even now, I, I keep thinking about stuff that I really want to hit on before we get too deep into things. So that way you already have these base building blocks that you'll understand and be able to keep building off of that. Um, so one of the things I do want to hit on is the, uh, the air handling and how to really deal with that. Um, so actually if we look back at, at this here, um, you can kind of see there's, there's different things that can be done to help with air handling. So like if we want to call something and be able to deal with an air and not actually have it throw an air if there is a problem. Uh, Lua provides this P call function. Um, I'm actually not 100% sure what that stands for, but uh, anyway, there's the P call function that we can use to kind of help with that, and then that way we can make our own error message and kind of tell things the way we want it to be told. Um, and so for this video, I just want to go more over just basic error handling. Um, So if we go back to our uh, test module here, or module test, um, we can go ahead and let's say we want to create a print function. Um, because normally print will just print a blank line for a nil. And let's say we want to actually throw an error there. We don't want it to print blank lines. We want to know right away that we had a nil object and you know we, we passed something that we thought was a string and it's not a string. Um, or more so it was nil and not simply a, an object. Um, we may even just go ahead and say we'll use to string on it because it won't change a string at all, but then it'll actually print a string for, you know, a table. It'll print the, telling us that it's a table and print the um, address, the handle address. Um, so we'll just start with our basic function here. Um, and like I said before, I actually do prefer the module dot function notation or dot name notation. Um, so we'll do print and let's say we don't want to deal with a bunch of parameters. We will only want this to ever deal with one thing at a time. Um, easiest way to check for nil. Um, in some situations you can kind of get into problems with this. Uh, it's more so if you're using not. So we actually try to go with not object. Um, there are some areas where that might not work. Um, in this case though we can just go with if object then uh, and and then say else. And so here we have an object. It's not nil um, and it doesn't evaluate to false. This is like I said so if we actually passed a boolean value of false it would it would think it was nothing. Um, so we want to make sure it explicitly checks for nil we can use a not equal to and then do nil there. So here, this is where we just want to go ahead and print what the object is. And then like I said, we'll go ahead and call to string on it. So that way, if it is a boolean, it'll just print, you know, true or false, depending upon what it is. Um, a table, it would print the word table, colon, and then a, an address to the handle. Um, for the, the table object. Um, and it'd be the same kind of thing for a function. It would just print the type and then the, the handle address. Um, so just object there. And then here's where we're gonna deal with the error. Um, let's just say we're gonna say uh, object cannot be nil. And then this is where uh, Lua actually provides a second parameter for the air function. Um, and it's uh, a stack index, basically. It, it lets you tell it how far in the calling hierarchy we want to be in. Um, by default, it would be 1, and that would be in this actual function. And so the idea here is uh, if we let we didn't give it a blank, you know, a, another parameter, or even set this to one. Um, it would throw the error at this line number 11. It would tell us, you know, line number 11, object cannot be nil. 
or I think it'll say there was, you know, error or something like that. But anyway, it'll tell us there's an error at a line number 11 in this file. And that's not really what we want because if we call this function, you know, all over the place, say a hundred times in various different parts of codes and all that, um, that can be really cumbersome to try and figure out where you're actually passing a nil object when you don't think you are. And this way, if we add that stack index at two, we're telling it to go ahead and know that the error is actually wherever this function gets called and not here. And, um, and that's just, like I said, that can be really helpful with actually tracking down errors. Uh, I know that was something I took forever to figure out that was something Lua had. Even when I first started using error, I just, I guess I didn't pay attention to the documentation here to see this, you know. Um, and that happens sometimes. You just, it, it takes layers to kind of absorb everything. And it may have taken me more than once to figure out that I really wanted to do this. Um, and with Cheat Engine, because it'll print the output to the uh, Lua window or the Lua Engine window, um, that's where, like, even I've gotten away from using a, a logger so much because it just, A, most people won't really, you know, unless you just really want to change the output, um, it's just not necessary. It's extra bulk. It's something you would have to either include in every module that you want to use it or, um, you know, actually copy and paste code or require it or something like that. And, it, you know, I mean, not a terrible idea if you prefer to use a logger. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just wanted to get away from doing that, uh, more for sharing code and that kind of thing. Plus, it, you've already seen my Lua module, my main one. I mean, it's already got a lot in there and a lot going on. So I just wanted to try and trim things down as much as I could. Um, I think I did show this one before. Um, there is a, a log.lua that's a pretty handy one. And this one does actually work inside Cheat Engine. It'll work just fine. Um, and there's documentation and all that at the GitHub repository. And I think I found this just looking for the Lua logger. Um, but anyway, we'll go back to this. And so if we import this or uh, require it and then call this function and pass it a string, it's just going to print the string or pass it any object that isn't nil. It'll just print, you know, convert it to a string and then print it. Um, but if we for whatever reason, don't set a variable right, or maybe, you know, typo, something like that, and we pass it a nil object, it'll tell us, you know, that we have passed it a nil object, and, it, you know, we don't want that. So back to our um, table that we created earlier, um, and that is something, make sure you actually do open a table again, that way we can require that test.lua file correctly and all that. Um, so we'll go ahead and use do file in this case just so when we make changes we won't have to clear out the loaded package. Um, there are ways to do that so you can keep using require. Uh, even I've got a function that I use sometimes that re-require that isn't terrible but we'll just stick with uh, do file for now just for simplicity. So, we're just going to print a string test, and we should get just the word test printed out, no big deal, you know, you can obviously add to that, do whatever, um, so let's go ahead and say we, you know, we've got different areas of code that are going to print, you know, this a few different times, but then all of a sudden we get to here and we accidentally pass it a nil, you know, or let's even just say we didn't we forgot to set our object here you know we we created it and meant to set it later and then went ahead and started working with it and then figured out oh we got to go back and fix that um, so this way it'll actually throw an error and then if you look here see normally this would actually be the the file name but when we're in here or even the uh, lua script engine because of the way cheat engine loads that 
it's just kind of a raw string. Um, but it will tell us that we're on, you know, the error is on line number seven, and that way we know that, you know, that's where we messed up, and it's not up here or wherever else. It's right here that we're passing nil. Um, so not a huge thing, <coughs> but it can make a big difference when you're debugging. Um, so I just wanted to touch on the error handling and that kind of thing with this. Um, so, like, say over to that pcall function, say we wanted to do this a different way um, so what we can do is then we can actually call p call on using this function so let's go ahead and say local and what it'll do is it'll return two variables basically the status and that'll be a boolean value telling you whether it had an error or not and then the error message if there was one um, and actually I say that error message really that's the that would be more of the return value. Um, so if it's not an error, and this actually did, you know, print return something, um, that return value would be there. Um, and I believe you could actually do multiple stuff. Um, so that way, if it has multiple values, it returns. But it's just the first one will always be the status when using p call. But here. Our return will just be the error message if there is one. And so the way we actually have to call this is we actually have to pass it just the function and then whatever parameters it has. And again, you could, if we were passing up multiple parameters, we could do that. Um, but we're just passing it the one for now. So we'll, we'll handle it that way. And then this way we can go ahead and say, you know, if status, then print OK else and, and then here we were just going to say let's go ahead and just print that return message or that error message if it if there was an error. And so if we execute this you'll see that it doesn't you know the error message isn't handled in the same way so you would almost have to throw the error again with that error message to get it to output um, and of course we can do that pretty easily and then it will throw the error and so in this case it would still throw this error here on line 11 rather than where we've actually called it because uh, the way pcall works it just won't store that debug information um, but there are situations that you get into where you want to be able to handle the error. And so in this case, if we had this nested inside a function, we could then go ahead and pass that 2 to it, and it'll deal with it correctly. Um, here, this would actually give you a weird, you know, because it's not, there is nothing outside of this other than uh, within Cheat Engine stuff. But as far as Lou is concerned, there isn't so it's not really going to help in this situation unless again we nested it and we're calling this function um, but we can also see so if we go ahead and say okay we, we forgot to set our object here so we're going to go ahead and set it and run this and then now it just you know runs the function and thus this gets printed and then it tells us that everything was okay um, so th you know there's different ways to handle error messages um, and to deal with errors when you're afraid one might get thrown and you don't want it to. Um, maybe you don't actually ever want it to throw an error to, say, stop the memory record from being enabled. You just want to know that there was an error. Um, this can be useful sometimes, like if you're using require and, say, you want to try a couple different spots, maybe um, instead of just a your, mod, your main module dot submodule notation, you want to try that, and if that fails, then you try just the submodule in case you've only shared that one file and not the whole thing. And this way, you can make your code work for multiple scenarios for people. Um, that's just dependent upon how you're writing your code and all that. Um, hopefully, you really won't need be needing the p call too much. Um, I know it's really selective where I feel like I need it. But I just wanted to go over it so this way you kind of got an idea or at least will remember there's a function to do that. Um, essentially this, you know, if you're no C sharp or even the way uh, uh, Cheat Engine adds that 
require, or, um, not require, but that uh, try and exception um, tags that you can use inside the auto assembler. Um, this works in the same way, and just like uh, C Sharp has, you know, try and exception, and that way you can try things, see if it works. If it doesn't, then do something based on that. Uh, you know, here it's not all done in one, but it's still the same concept. This way we can try things, and if it fails, then try something different. And, you know, try for different environments and, you know, just whatever the scenario happens to be. And then there's, uh, pretty rare when you're really going to want to use this. And just know that uh, a lot of this stuff in this debug um, module or class even, um, or object that Lua provides, it, it adds a lot of overhead. So, like, you really don't want to be using this in heavy loops or anything like that because it, it, will, it will slow things down you know to a ridiculous level sometimes if you're calling it a lot but if you start messing with this debug thing you can actually get information so like trace back it'll just basically tell us where this is being called um, and that can be kind of useful sometimes to know, you know, like this might be something if you did make your own logger, you might use this to know if you, if we actually stepped it back one. Because um, again, this will actually take an index value and by default it'll be one. And so then if we go back to our module here and we go ahead and put that debug trace back in here, we can give it this stack index of two and then we can get a little more info on what's going on. You more so, uh, the scenario would be you want to know where this is actually being called. Say you you don't think you you know you're only using it in one module, but it seems like it's getting used somewhere else. Maybe it changes a global or something, and so you're not expecting it to be changes all you know to what's happening, and you want to see where you're calling it, and that's where this kind of thing can get useful. Um, and you can see not only do we get you know the actual function that it's being called in. But then we even get the calling function and where, you know, the line number where that's at. Um, and this can even give us the info on the P call. Um, that way we kind of know what's going on. So that's not really something you'd want to leave in your code. Um, but for debugging and just figuring out what's going on, that's where that debug traceback can get kind of useful. Um, I'm not planning on going deep into this uh, debug variable but there are more things you can do with that um, to kind of give it an example here so like you can kind of see um, not only do I accept a, a you know stack index that I add on top of the current one but then this way I can go ahead and um, you know check argument type and then throw an error and it'll actually give me the name of the function that you know this has been called in and you know just handle the the you know the uh, argument checking and that kind of thing um, and like I had mentioned there are ways to check for whether it's an integer or a float and you know so in that debug it you know you can use it in, in some scenarios and then um, you would just need to kind of look up if people really want me to get more into this I'll try but um, my knowledge is limited on this stuff um, just because you don't use it a lot uh, more just general the error message would be where I use it um, but that was kind of the bulk of what I wanted to go over um, really these main things and then the P call was kind of what I wanted to handle on the error messages. Um, just so that way, as I said before, you you know, good error handling can save you a lot of trouble when it comes to debugging. Um, and so I think finally in the next video, we're going to get into um, actually writing a module that you're going to use. Um, that's where we'll actually get into, you know, how to import it. May still be another video after that, depending on its length. But um, at any rate, we'll, we'll set up an actual module. Um, someone had suggested a simple, you know, something not too complicated that's basically a timer or even a thread. We can kind of play with either one of those or both of them. 
uh, to constantly say read from max health and then write to current health so that way you know if you don't want to do an injection you know there are some scenarios where code injection maybe there's um, so if there's some kind of integrity check with the code um, it may throw an error and crash the game or whatever and instead of trying to track down all that you just want a, a real simple you know script to constantly write to your current health and give you max health or you know an infinite health kind of thing um, you can do that pretty easily and this way you'll have your own uh, function within a file or we'll go ahead and make it a module just to keep going with the modular teaching um, may even make it a full object so that way you can have different instances of it but this way we'll just handle something a little simple uh, and then it'll actually be code that you can actually use in a, in a table and and then go over how to include that with the table and make it more distributable distributable and uh, user-friendly and all that kind of fun stuff um, so more to come